Hey folks, I'm Mike. Do you hate ads? I hate ads. You know what I like? Patreon.com slash Inkdependence. It keeps this blog ad free. Hello folks and welcome to Inkdependence.com. Today we have an Aurora pen. You've seen a couple of pens like this on the channel before. Uh, I just, I really don't get tired of uh, reviewing these Aurora 88s. I really love these things. I reviewed a uh, black and gold version which uh, had a fine nib just like this one did. Uh, I also reviewed the flex nib that they had out and that was in a yellow 88. That was immediately after the black one. In fact, I think I had them both at the same time for a day or two. And this is the Aurora 88. It's a new limited edition. Well, this one came out in August, I suppose. Um, but this is a new limited edition called the Minerali. And this one is the Azurite. It has these beautiful uh, blue end caps there. That chatoyance in there. Nice depth on this material. Also has it at the waistband here, the top of the section. Let's see. Here, focus here. There we go. At the top of the section, and it also has it at the end of the cap on the finial. So we've got uh, this beautiful blue that's setting off the uh, demonstrator version of this pen. You haven't seen a demonstrator version of this pen yet on this channel, and uh, I think that's pretty cool because I like seeing the workings of pens, especially pens that have a cool filling system. Like uh, this one has the um, has a um, it's a piston filler, of course, but it also has a sort of like secret ink tank in here that holds a little bit of extra ink if you run out. So uh, this is pretty cool. And in fact, I'm going to clean this out and I'll show it to you um, empty as well. But I wanted to go ahead and start out the video with ink in the pen just to show it sloshing around in there. This is um, uh, Monteverde's Olivine, which is a very cool uh, gemstone ink. It's, um, well, it's olive -y looking really. It's like an olive green, but uh, very cool, I think. I'm really liking it in this particular pen. And then I'll clean it out and we'll see how the inside of this looks with no ink in it. But I think it's worth seeing with ink just to, you know, do this, do a little brief writing sample, although we've seen this pen right before. And you shouldn't be particularly um, uh, surprised by how this pen writes, which is quite well. So some details on this pen. Uh, it is the uh, same size and shape and all that sort of thing as the other 88s we've looked at before. So in that sense, not particularly interesting, although it does have a nice... Uh, uh, you know, a bit of rhodium plated hardware here. I really like the silver hardware on stuff uh, as opposed to gold. I'm just not that big a fan of gold. The blue azurite on here is pretty cool. This is the first of these versions. There will be five of them. I'll pop up a picture here of these five pens. And you'll see them in uh, diopside, which is this beautiful green. Uh, amber, which is a yellowy orange that I am really into. I, that one's the most tempting of any of these for sure. The Cinnabar, which is red, and Amethyst, which is purple. And if the uh, sort of purple craze is still going on, as it has been for a while, I imagine that Amethyst is going to go fast. Uh, that Amber, though, dang, that's good looking. The blue is very cool. They are numbered up here on the finial. So this is obviously number 174 of 388. Uh, it has a pure, clear... Uh, cap on this thing, which I really enjoy. Um, I think uh, a lot of these sort of demonstrator pens, I think they lose something when they have an inner cap liner. So when you look at like the uh, Pilot Custom 74s and uh, Twisbees and things like that, they've got a cap liner in there and it's usually either smoked or it's uh, slightly opaque or something like that. And I think that really takes away from the beauty of you know being able to see the nib and everything in its natural habitat in the cap. And uh, so I like that they've left this crystal clear. Now the reason a lot of these companies will do a cap liner is because it reduces the amount of space around the nib inside the cap and it increases um, like the longevity. It keeps it from getting hard starts and it keeps the ink from drying out, that sort of thing. I haven't had that problem with this pen and I've had this um, a few weeks now. I actually got it at the Dallas Pen Show is when I picked it up from him off the table. I said, this is really cool. Can I check it out? And he said, yes. Uh, that's Carrie anyway at Kenro. He offered to give me the box. I didn't get the box. So I'm not showing it here. It is a rather monolithic box. I just did not have room in my luggage to take it home, honestly. Uh, but it is like a big metal box. It's silvery. It's got room underneath the, the pen tray for an entire bottle of ink or two. It's, it's a really nice box, but I didn't have room, so I did not bring that with me. Uh, so you'll have to go to the website or um, check out Joe Crace's review at Gentleman Stationer. He's got uh, the whole box and everything. You can see the works on his site. Uh, moving up the pen, you have the very cool Aurora nib. I actually really like the nibs on these pens because they wrap around the feet a little bit, and I think it just gives it a really beautiful shape. Nobody else has got this shape going on. I think that looks cool. It's pretty heavily ornamented on these. These are 18 karat gold nibs. This one's rhodium plated, of course. Uh, it's not a steel nib. This is rhodium. 
And then you can see the feed, or not the feed, the, um, the grip section is also clear. And you can actually see right here where the nib seats into the section. And you can see underneath, this is the feed. Now, some people, I think, get a bit confused by clear sections. They tend to think that there's something wrong with the pen if they can see ink through the through the section or if it's getting on top of the nib. I've seen a lot of people say things like that online, like, oh, man, there's something wrong with my pen. I've got ink on top of the nib. And that what they mean is inside here in the section. That is completely normal. If you didn't have ink around and uh, touching the nib, you wouldn't be getting any ink out of it. We just don't normally see it because there'll be like, um, like a screw-in nib unit or there'll be an opaque section or something something like that. But don't be alarmed if you see a pen and it has like, ink up in here. It's supposed to. Um, now, if you have ink like all over the top of the actual nib that's exposed, that might be a problem. But inside here, totally normal. That's good. Here we have the threads, which are a little bit more opaque because actually the section, I think, screws in or is glued in here. And you see this is where the... Oops. Come on, lost focus. And you'll see this right here is a bit where the feed comes up to uh, meet the ink, sec ink tank area. You've got uh, what would be an ink window in uh, most of the models of pens. This is the ink window here. It's the same thing as you'll find in the other 88s. And then this bit right here is what is not usually see-through. This gives you a look at the piston rod here, which is plastic. It gives you a look at this uh, assembly here, which is a nice metal. Uh, you've got the uh, sort of the piston head here, which is what moves up and down. And then this is the, the knob, of course. So I'm not going to twist that now because, as you can see, this is quite full of ink. I filled it recently. Uh, refilled it recently, I should say. I've gone through quite a bit of ink in this pen, even though it is a fine nib. And it's actually a little bit on the dry side, this nib, uh, as compared to some of the other Auroras I've used, but still a perfectly pleasant nib, not uh, not scratchy at all, not dry uh, in, a, in an extreme, just a little bit on the dry side. Um, you can also see up here where it's like sort of epoxied into the, the pen. Sometimes this bothers people with demonstrator style pens, but remember, this is a demonstrator pen. You're supposed to be able to see all the inner workings. So that's not that odd. Something that is a little bit different about this pen as compared to other demonstrators is, it, is that this is a double wall demonstrator. It looks to me anyway, as though you have a pen barrel and then they insert this other these other workings. So you can see here a little bit along the edges, perhaps, there's a gap in there between the side of the ink tank and the side of the uh, the barrel, right? So uh, a fair amount of room. And this is kind of cool, but it also means if anything gets stuck in between these sections, I don't know if you can even get it out. So for instance, on this pen, there's a little bit of sputs <laughs> right there. And I think it's just like a little manufacturing dust or something, but this is a crystal clear pen and it is a total demonstrator. So any little bit of sputs in there, you're going to see. If ink ever gets in there, although honestly, I don't know how it would. I mean, if anything can get in here, it's going to stay. And I don't think you can get it out because this pen does not really come apart at all. This isn't some Twisby where you can just like un take all the parts out. Uh, I don't think you can get this out. So I think that that little bit of sputs is there to stay. So if you ever end up with this pen, you'll be like, oh yeah, this is number uh, 174 that Mike showed. Uh, it's a little bit, uh, I mean, it's famous because it's on the interwebs, but it's also got a little bit of sputs. So if that bothers you, if you're the kind of uh, perfectionist that's like, I can't have a little bit of sputs in there, um, well, <laughs> maybe this isn't the uh, particular pen for you. But uh, I do love the look of this pen. So let's do a little brief writing sample and then we'll uh, I'll go and clean it out and I'll show, it to you, show you what it looks like empty. That's a plan. Okay, let's go ahead and do a writing sample here. Uh, I just I just Googled quick quips to put on uh, <laughs> to put on this paper, and this is the one that struck my fancy. think education is expensive try ignorance this is written with the aurora adh minerale and this ink is monteverde olivine i thought it was a, a fitting uh, a fitting thing to use olivine which is a mineral um uh, uh, an ink named after a mineral to write in the minerali. I don't know, I could have gone with blue, but there's something satisfying to me about not matching the pen and ink colors. So uh, I went with uh, green ink and a blue pen. Yeah, good times. As I said, this uh, this nib is pretty fine. This is uh, labeled as a fine nib, of course. Um, but it's also a little bit on the dry side. It's never reticent to start up, 
Um, it just has a, a very fine nib. And look, as you can tell from this handwriting right here, I am not particularly good at writing with a fine nib. Uh, I'm just used to writing with bigger nibs. And so the fine nibs sometimes, um, they make my writing look a little bit spidery and weird. But uh, if you're a fine nib person, and I know there are definitely a lot of fine nib people out there, definitely give this a try. I I've really liked the smaller um, uh, Aurora nibs. Their fines are good, their mediums are good. Heck, I've even really liked their extra fines. Um, so even uh, a guy who likes broad nibs can learn to like a fine nib and the right pen. So check these out. Uh, I'll be right back. Let me go and clean out this pen. I'll be back in a few. Bye. Okay, so I am freshly back from cleaning out this pen, and uh, let me tell you, there's a reason that I don't use very many piston fill pens. Uh, as a pen and ink blogger, as you know I am, I demand that my pen be completely cleaned out before I switch inks, or uh, before I put a pen away, or before I send a pen out to someone, or you know, return a pen, that kind of thing. And so I'm going to be giving this pen back to Kenro, and so I wanted to make sure it was thoroughly clean because they're going to sell it to somebody or give it to another reviewer or something like that, and I want to make sure that it's as as I can make it. This pen is a bit of an annoyance to clean, and I imagine all of the 88s are going to be like this because they all have the same internals. Well, the 88 pistons, they do actually make like a cartridge converter one, but whatever. Um, the piston fill system in here is a little bit different from others in a number of ways. They have like this extra ink tank thing going on where they say there's a little bit of extra ink in there uh, all the time when you think you're done. Uh, and that is true. You cannot clean this thing out very well. So this is uh, that section. It's now cleaned out. And actually, the nib and feed on this pin are quite easy to remove, and it feels pretty safe. Um, you just pinch here and here. Or to give it a little bit of a tug and out it comes. This is a giant feed. Look at the feed on this sucker. It's massive. It's got a little bit of water left on there, a little condensate. That's fine. That's the nib. And you can see there's a big notch cut out of the back of the nib. You set that notch in there, align the feed right. And then when you go to put this in, there is a way that it goes in, just slips right in there. Where is it? Now I'm trying to do a video. There it is. You can actually see the cutouts in here. It's kind of. Zoop, there you go. And then the nib is seated perfectly. That's actually a very nice system. The problem is back here. So you can see that this nipple on the uh, on the feed goes back into the ink chamber as they all do. But you can also see that it's sort of, you can also see it's sort of encased in uh, like a plastic bit and that there's a little bit of water in there. I cannot get that water out of there and I think that's by design. And that is a little annoying to me because I want it to be perfectly clean. So when you screw the piston down here, it has this like, very interesting piston head, which is very different from other piston heads you're gonna see on other uh, piston filled pens. Uh, you screw this guy down and you can see it's gonna cover that nipple. And I saw that in the regular 88, but since I couldn't see through the rest of the pen, I wasn't really sure what was going on there. And you can see this cleaned out very nicely, that olivine ink had left no remnants at all. You can also definitely better see that this is a double wall pen. Uh, but this thing right here, where the end of the piston goes over the little nipple thing there, that's really annoying because this a bit of water here does not move. Uh, you can sort of shake it around in there. But in order to get it out of the pen, I'd have to get it out of this tube. And in fact, in order to clean the ink out of this pen, I had to get take uh, take the nib and feed out, which is why I tried that, and it worked great, which is nice. Uh, and then I took a blunt nose syringe and I poked it up through here carefully. There's a little hole. It's it was not that hard actually, but whatever. I was careful because it's not my pen. It's kind of expensive. And I just sort of blasted water up and around here because you got to get this ink in here out of there. So. Um, once you get this out of there, I think the only thing that, the only thing I can think to try to get that water out of there, and I'm not going to do it because I, I don't know, um, but you take, maybe you take the nib and feed out or set it upright in a cup and, uh, put it in some sunlight maybe to let that, you know, that water like vaporize a bit and evaporate through the nib or just through this hole. That doesn't seem like the best idea. I don't like leaving my pens in like full sunlight to bake for a while. I don't think that's a very good idea, so I'm not going to do it, but... I don't really know what else to do about that because now there's water in there. There would have been ink otherwise. So I guess it's better that there's water because the water at least will like, you know, evaporate cleanly eventually. But you have to leave the cap off for a long time. I'm not really sure. You can see, like, you can see it in there. It's got a little bit of, an, of, of a green tint. And I tell you, I blasted water in there a, a lot. Lots and many, many mills. In fact, hell, I don't know. I mean, it was glasses of water I went through trying to get the ink out of there. So this is, um, this is a pen that I think you need to pick an ink for. 
and stick with that ink. And I think that's probably true with this pen and probably the Optimas. Anything that uses this kind of filling system, I would say, man, pick an ink. Because most pistons, when you look at them, are flat on the bottom. And they meet flat down here at the bottom of the uh, whatever their... Uh, their ink tank volume is, the, the inside of the pen. And so that way, when you push it all the way down, it's flattening out and it's forcing all the water or ink or whatever through the hole. And so then you can clean it out completely. This one with this little nipple thing in here, man, it is a bear to get this thing cleaned out. That's my only complaint about this pen, is that it is a bear to clean. Here's the other problem with this pen, and that's that it is expensive. But you already knew that because it's an Italian limited edition. But these pens, uh, the Misrip, the MSRP on these guys is $795. 800 bucks is a lot of bucks for a pen, if you ask me. Even a limited edition of 388, which is a fairly small limited edition. Um, you can find this on the street between, uh, the lowest price I found is $5.95, which is actually not terrible for this pen, uh, for a limited edition in an Aurora 88 that's this good. I mean, it's a great pen. I love the way this thing feels. It doesn't feel cheap at all. Some people think that demonstrators feel cheap. This is a, a sturdy, rigid, like awesome pen to hold in your hand. I really like it. Um, $5.95 is still pretty expensive. It's above my floor or my ceiling, I think. Uh, man, that yellow one, though. If I get that one at $5.95, maybe I'll think about it. But whatever. Um, but uh, most places you'll get it between like $6.50 and $7.16. I've seen it in a couple of places. So, you know, check, out, check it out online. See if you can find the, the best price for you before these go away. There aren't terribly many of them. But people do seem to have them in stock still. So maybe a thing to look for. Oh, here's another thing about this pen. And that's that you can't tell... But there's actually two sections here as well. So just as I said, the barrel here seems double walled. This is also double walled. So the nib and feed don't just slot into a solid section. Here, you can barely see it, but there is a divide. There's actually a plastic like, I don't know, section holder thingy in there, sort of. It doesn't. It seems to be part of the construction. I don't know how it's built, but there was just a tiny bit of ink inside in the gap between the two pieces of plastic. And on a demonstrator pen with a clear with a clear section, I mean, that happens all the time. Like any pen that has a nib unit will get ink in there because you're going to fill it. It's a piston filler. You got to dip it in ink, whatever. But uh, when you're trying to clean it out and it's clear, you can see just a tiny little bit of ink in there. I got it out. It wasn't that hard. I just kind of put the end of this in, like dipped it in water a little bit and then put it on like put it down on a paper towel and it wicked right out of there. So it wasn't a problem, but be aware that that can be there. And all you got to do is wick it out a little bit. It'll come out just fine. But uh, like if I left it in there, I don't know, maybe I pass this on to my kids and I didn't clean it out and maybe I never get that ink out of there. So, uh, you know, those are just some things to, to think about with um, clear demonstrator pens and this one in particular. So, all right, that has been my uh, quick review, quick-ish anyway, of the Aurora 88 Minerali as your right blue. But uh, uh, yeah, check these out. They're uh, a very cool and interesting pen. The only problem with it for me is uh, the cleaning out bit. But if you're a person that only use, uses one or two kinds of ink, and I know a lot of people are like that, this is going to be a great pen for you and you're not going to care about that thing where you can't get every last single iota of ink out of it because it doesn't matter for most people just for people who are uh i don't know a little bit crazy about that like me that's my craziness all right that's it i will see y'all later peace out this is, um, this is as thoroughly clean as i can make this pen right now oh come on stupid nonsense zoom focus Blah.